Hey Luke here with CaptainCarp.com and me and my boy Tom here are magnet fishing. Uh, and despite what Tommy thinks, this is not using magnets to catch fish. Instead, we're catching uh, little little treasures. Now obviously you're not going to get rich with a magnet. You're, not, you're probably not going to find anything super valuable, but it's kind of a fun thing to do. And it's a nice skill to have when you inevitably drop your favorite knife or rod over the edge of the boat. I've got two magnets here. I've got a 250 pound magnet from Harbor Freight. It was $19. And I've got this other uh, thing, these four 95 pound magnets from Harbor Freight for uh, 20 bucks for all, all four of them. And, uh, and I use this to go chuck the magnets in the water and, and to see what we can find. So these are the two magnets I'm using to magnet fish. The big one's a 250 pound magnet from Harbor Freight. Uh, it was 1999, I think. But if you've got a link to some better magnet fishing stuff or you know a better place to find cheap, high-powered magnets, um, post a comment. We'd love to hear it. And you can see here it's just a big brick with uh, some ridges in the bottom and a, a little loop to feed a knot. I'm embarrassed at what a crappy knot I tied on this. It, it came undone and I almost lost my magnet. So tie a better knot than that, okay? Um, so these are the things I used to make that other uh, magnet fishing contraption. Four magnets from Harbor Freight for $5 each. There are three inch, 95 pound magnets. And then I've got two pieces of wood, uh, 11 and a half inches each, then 16 inches. Form this nice little triangle. I put a two and a half inch screw into each corner uh, and it was really solid that way. I used two by two wood, but I really should have used a two by one. Uh, the two by two was a little bit too buoyant and caused the whole thing to sink too slowly. Um, but it still worked okay. Maybe if I added a few more magnets, it'd make it heavier and work out well. But uh, it still worked good. You just had to wait for it to sink to the bottom a little bit more, and you had to pull it really slowly. But the upside was it was so light on the bottom that when something would click and attach to it, you could really feel it. And so you could tell as soon as there was something uh, metal uh, attached to it. The 250 pound magnet was nice. It was such a brick that it would just go straight to the bottom and you could bounce it across the bottom here. And uh, you could really feel what was on the bottom, whether it was mud or rocks or even something large and metal stuck in the mud. You could, you could feel a lot of uh, feedback up through the line. Now this is really typical of what I found. A couple uh, safety pins, uh, some wire, a chunk of metal, stuff like that. You could also throw the magnet and drag it across the bottom, and that worked really well for picking up stuff. Um, and that's probably the way I used it the most. Oh, look at this, Tom. Yeah, look at that. Now put it in the bucket. Oh, oh this one. yeah! Look at that, Tom. No one. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, you want to do that? Oh, that's a big Oh, look at this. There was a massive amount of decomposing metal in the soil there. Just little random flecks and bits of iron from chunks of metal that had basically dissolved into nothing and rusted into nothing. It was insane how much of that stuff was in the soil and being picked up by the magnet. <laughs> hey, Tommy, look at this. Come here, check this out. Hey, Tommy. One thing that surprised me is how few fishing hooks I found. Um, I found maybe three or four fishing hooks, even though this place is crawling with fishermen. 
um, like here for instance. But most of them were so dissolved, it was just like a little piece of fishing hook shaped wire. I mean, there was no point left, there was no barb left, it was breaking your hand uh, type stuff. The metal in this water was dissolving incredibly quickly. Um, and I thought that was pretty interesting. I mean, this is a ballpoint pen right here. Um, the metal tip was what stuck to the magnet. And a lot of this stuff was just incredibly broken down. This little magnet fishing device actually worked pretty well. It was so light, it was really sensitive, and you could feel when you were picking up hey, something Tom. and when it fell off. So you could know when to go back and try to pick it up again. Just kind of chuck it like a frisbee so it lands straight side up. And then uh, the once it hits the water, the magnets on the bottom and the wood on the top make sure it lands right side up. I got something. I and you can feel when you got something. Oh, look at this. That's the, oh, oh, that's the dead. What? That's the dead. That's dead. That's dead. That's a vice grip. You want to hold it? You want to put it in the bucket? Yeah. Yeah, it's heavy. Huh, look at that, Tom. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, why do you a piece of wood? See? Why do you a piece of wood? Yeah. Ah. Go take it. Oh! Just plumbing the bottom along the perimeter of these docks was really effective. I think that's where I found a good chunk of the stuff on this trip. Um, how many people loading up their boats and hanging out on the docks or fishing from the docks have dropped stuff. So um, these really busy docks are a great place to, to go magnet fishing. Hold down, check this out. Hey Tom, look at this. Once again, you can see just a huge amount of decomposed metal bits, just metal and iron particles stuck to the magnet. It was just like coating them. Look at that Tom, a knife. Oh, oh. Me and Tommy spent about an hour our, uh, magnet fishing here at Gravelly Point and uh, what we found, we found uh, someone's bait knife or a murder weapon, either one, not sure. I like to think it's a bait knife. Um, big old wrench, fingernail clippers, vice grips, someone's uh, reel handle and a whole bunch of beer bottle caps and screws and even found an uh, old CO2 cartridge ballpoint pen, crushed battery, cigarette lighters, lots of bits of hooks. So I think I'm going to throw most of this away, but I'm going to keep this uh, wrench here and see if I can't salvage it. And I'm going to keep this bait knife. It looks like it's uh, still in pretty decent shape. So let me show you kind of the before and after pics of the uh, wrench and the knife. And then I'm going to go through and show you exactly what I did to clean them up. Cleaning the knife is pretty simple because it's mostly flat. Just take some wet metal sandpaper and some WD-40 and start scrubbing. Start with some coarse stuff, about 320 grit, and work all your way up to 1,000 or 2,000 grit uh, sandpaper. And then once you're finally done, you rub it down with a piece of uh, polishing sponge or some le uh, tool leather. And it gets a pretty decent polish on there and it'll keep it from uh, re-rusting. 
but it looks pretty good other than a few pits uh, from the rust. The wrench had more intricate parts. It wasn't as flat, so I used an electrolysis bath. Basically take a bucket of water, um, add some baking soda to it, and then you clamp on some battery chargers and you put the red end, the positive end, onto something that you don't care about, like a, just a big old lumber nail, you know, something you want to rust, and then attach the negative end onto whatever you're trying to get the rust off of. And uh, you can try to use a hook to connect uh, the charger to the item because you don't want your chargers to get in the water because then you rust up your chargers. Once you get everything set, you hook up the battery and you'll start seeing this fizzing immediately. Now it's best to do this with a car battery charger, but mine was busted, so I just hooked it directly to my wife's car. And after 12 hours, the bucket looks like this. It's full of rust, and the rust has come off the wrench, and the lumber nail is just completely corroded. And uh, after scrubbing it and hitting it with some WD-40 and, and scrubbing it with a little wire brush, it looks like this, and it works again. And it was definitely not doing that uh, before the electrolysis bath. So. Those are two great methods to kind of salvage your finds and try to get them going again. This uh, wrench looks beat up, but it, it works just fine. So if you like these videos, check out some of our other great do-it-yourself videos, including making a smoker from a file cabinet and how to make your own fish trap. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to click subscribe for more videos every week.